Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today on Everything Aero Pilates. Right now I wanted to do something a little different and I wanted to show you some back warm up and stretches that I do to keep my back healthy and flexible. And um, I do this because I um, have an old injury from when I was in the military, my right knee had an injury and I compensated on my left side and my left hip also was injured um, through a workout but also because of the compensation. And so uh, sometimes I have pain but I've been able to manage my pain completely with the Aero Pilates without using anything else. And um, I don't use over-the-counter or um, traditional medical things anyway to deal with pain, but um, I mean I could use it like a natural oil or ointment or um, massage or, or whatever to help with the pain. And um, even though that is wonderful, it's just extra maintenance. And if I'm already doing the Aero Pilates for my fitness and it's actually helping my back as well, that's two for one. And that is a time saver for me, and so I love it for that. So I wanted to show you what I do. Now I'm going to do like 10 exercises, but really there's a couple in each one. So for instance, the warm-up footwork is my first thing that I do, and I do between three to five positions for my warm-up footwork, but I'm going to still tell you it's for my one because it's just one set of um of exercises that warm up and, sh and stretch my back. To do the warm up footwork, I lay down on my back and my feet are gonna be up on the tow bar. Um, I have a head and neck pillow which really supports the curve of my neck. Before I had my head and neck pillow, I just lifted up my headrest to make it comfortable and, and, and it was comfortable or sometimes I would leave it flat if that's what I felt like. But um, once, once you get the head and neck pillow, you know, you get kind of addicted and you really love the way that it makes your neck feel. So I'm going to go ahead and use my head and neck pillow since I have it. And I chose four positions to do today and I'm going to go ahead and show you how I start a back stretch and warm up routine that I sometimes do before bed or if I'm just really achy. I'm just going to start with a high heel toe and I have my toes kind of wrapped on the bar, my heels are high and my legs are, um, my legs are close together. I'm not going to squeeze because I'm really focused on this stretch here. When I come down to my squat is when I stretch out my hamstrings, my glutes, and all the way into my lower back. So I'm going to do 10 of these. One, two, I'm straightening, straightening my legs, but I'm not snapping them or overextending them. Four, five, six, my heels are staying high. Seven, and every time I come in, I'm feeling this stretch. Eight, nine, and ten. All right, so the next position I would like to do is V position, and that's where my heels are together, my toes are apart, but my toes are wrapped around the bar. I'm starting to get a little bit of a stretch on my inner thighs, which also um, stretches a different part of my lower back, and I'm still getting stretch into here, into my lower back when I do my squat. So here's one. As I come down, I feel a strengthen and a stretch. Strengthen. Here's my stretch. Two. Here's my stretch. Three. And I'm warming up my lower back. Four. Right now, which is going to make it really good for my back stretches later. It's going to make it warm and supple. Six. Seven. So that when I do those stretches later, it's not on a cold back. Eight. Nine. And ten. And stretching on a cold back can be really uncomfortable. So I really like to get it warmed up. Now I'm going to do heels and I'm putting my legs together for this one. Um, there's sometimes I do hip width apart, but right now I'm going to do it together. And I'm really flexing my toes towards my head. And I'm doing that because I really want to activate these muscles in here. These are muscles that keep you from shuffling your feet um, because they stay strong and they keep you from tripping. Um, if you're clumsy or if you're older. So these are really important muscles to activate and you do that by flexing your toes towards your head. And I have my heels pretty well on the bar so I know I'm not going to slip. And I'm going to go out one. If you do slip, two. You just get it back on the bar and go again. Three. I'm straightening my legs without overstanding. Four. Or without locking out my knees. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, trying to keep those feet flexed, and ten. So I'm on two chords for this whole process, and I'm doing that because that's the easiest chords that you can be on, two black chords. 
Um, and I'm just trying to warm up my back and stretch it. Not really worry about the workout. So when I have the two cords on, it is still actually quite challenging. If you're really focusing on those legs, you're gonna get quite a workout even still with this stretch. And so now I'm gonna do wide position toes. Sometimes I do wide position heels. This right, right now I'm gonna do wide position toes. Now I'm really starting to feel stretch in here, stretch in here, which is again gonna loosen and warm up my lower back. So let's go. So one, two, I'm making sure my knees are staying over my toes. Three, four, five, I feel that stretch every time I come in. Six, seven, and if you're really tight, you're really gonna feel that stretch. Eight, nine, and 10. So that was my first group of back warm-up stretches that I do. And I find for myself it's really important not to skip that when I have a tight back because it really helps to warm up my back and begin the stretching process. If my back is already sore and I stretch it too extremely, too extreme, too quickly, then it ends up being really uncomfortable. So the second thing that I do when I'm warming up and stretching out my back is uh, legs and straps. So I just laid down to do the warm-up footwork. We're gonna, I'm gonna lay back down and I'm gonna show you the legs and straps. So I just switched out my handles in another video if you wanna see that, how to do that. And I have the handles that have the double loops. So I have this, the hand loop and the foot loop. I'm obviously gonna use the foot loop right now for my legs and straps. The way that Marjolaine Brigman puts her foot in the strap, she brings her leg close to her like this and she gets that foot in, her, in the strap. The reason that I'm not going to do that is because it's really difficult for me because I have an extra layer here that she does not have. And so I can probably do it, but it's super uncomfortable. So what I like to do is stretch out my leg. So I do have a little flexibility in my hamstring and I put my foot in that way. So that's when I get my foot in the strap. But I want to show you what I used to have to do. Once you get one from the strap, you put your weight on it like you're standing up on that foot and you put your foot at the 45 degree angle. For the second foot, what I used to have to do is lasso it. So, I'm, since I have my double strap, I'm gonna find my big foot strap. I still put my foot up, my leg up as close as I can get it, and I hold onto my D-ring, and I try to lasso my foot. That went pretty quickly, but it didn't need to always go so quickly. So I just lassoed my foot, or whatever I had to do, and I was able to get my feet in these straps at the very beginning, so I know that you guys can do this. So now that I have them in my straps, automatically I'm feeling a stretch down into my lower back. You know, all the way up and then down into my lower back. When I had my husband do this particular exercise, he could not straighten his legs so they were like this. But they still pulled it enough that he was still getting a stretch in his lower back and up through here. So whatever you, whatever is comfortable, is what we do. So he's still in a bent leg position even today, although his legs are starting to straighten. He's not, he doesn't do it enough to keep his flexibility up, but um, I always could do straightened, but maybe a little lower, I couldn't go quite so high. Now my legs really um, allow me to stretch out pretty far. There are a lot of different levels. And then even some days, if you haven't done aeroplanes for a while, for like a week or two, you might find your level is even a little regressed but just be patient, it will come back. So, when my husband has his knees bent, he does like lowers with his knees bent. He still, and we come up all the way every time, and he still feels the stretch all the way down into his lower back. So, we do 10 of these. Two, three, I'm gonna show you five like my husband. Four, five, and again, every time he comes up and lets the stretch. Now, the last five, are, where I'm going to do straight leg. So every time again, I come up and I stretch. So really feel it in my lower back. Six, and I'm also strengthening by pushing away. Seven, eight, I let it come up. Nine, and 10. You're really going to feel a great stretch in your lower back. Okay, so the next thing I do is leg circles. And I have my husband do this too. Again, his legs are bent. So we're gonna do, the first ones are up, around, and down. Up, around, and down. 
So with your legs it bent, it looks like this. Up, around, and down. Two. We do five of these. Three. Now we're going to do straight leg to show you straight leg. It's still up, around, and down. Four. And five. Now I stop and I always hang out a little in between to get that stretch. Now I'm going to go do reverse leg circles. So I'm going down, around, and up. Down, around, and up. Again, my husband still has the bent knees, so he goes down, around, and up. One, down, around, and up. But I, this is my favorite one, so I'm going to do it straight leg. Down, around, and up. Three, down, around, and up. Four, down, around, and up. Five. Now, when I was beginning, I only did smaller circles, and I still completely felt my back strengthening and stretching. Now I really like to do the wide circles because it really stretches out and really gives me a great back stretch. One of my other favorite legs and strap moves to do for my back is walking. And so for walking, it's kind of like you're walking on the ceiling, but you put your legs out to a 45 degree angle. Now again, my husband's knees are bent, and all I'm going to do is bring one leg kind of close into my chest as if I'm stretching my back, while my other leg goes up. So if I was doing straight leg, it would look like this. But I'm going to show you bent leg first. So my bent leg is going to come into my chest. This one's still bent, and it just goes a little up. So I'm stretching here, but really where I'm getting a great stretch is with this leg down close to me. So I do 10 of these. So this is one, bent leg, two, bent leg, three, four. I'm pushing out to my toes. My toes are together in between. Five. Now I'm going to go straight leg. Six. Seven. You really get a stretch with a straight leg because it pulls you back more because your legs are going up more. Eight. Really feeling stretch in here and in here. Nine. And ten. And now I just, before I take my feet out, I'm going to just hang a little bit longer. Really feel that stretch down in the, the, the small of my back. I'm really feeling that stretch. I am feeling the stretch in here too, but it really stretches down in the small of my back. Okay, time to get my feet out. I take one foot out of the strap and I put it to the toe bar. Second foot out of the strap and to the toe bar. Now that my back is really warmed up and already starting to be stretched and strengthened, I'm going to go ahead and go into a knee stretch. Knee stretch is probably my favorite exercise for my back, but I could not always do that. Like I mentioned, I, I have an injury on my right knee, and it was really uncomfortable to be up on the platform on my knees. Um, now that I've strengthened my knees through the Aero Pilates workout, I can be up on the platform. But I'm going to show you what I did before. So before I can be on the platform on my knees, uh, the knee stretch is really about curving your back and then extending your back. And so that's kind of like the cat stretch and the cow stretch that you do in a lot of traditional fitness. But this is not a static exercise. You're moving through this exercise. And that actually strengthens and stretches. It's an active stretch, which is even better. So before I could do the knee stretch, I did my C curve, my bloody C curve, which I curved over. My back is like a curve and my head is down. And I pushed away from the toe bar with my arms and really stretch that out. My legs are just kind of hanging relaxed. And then I would come in and I would pull the, pull the toe bar towards me and do a back extension. Now if you were standing in your back extension, you put your hands back here on your hip and you lean back. This is what it's mimicking, but I'm holding onto my toe bar so I don't lose my balance and I go back as far as I can. And I'm gonna show you one more time. So I'm curving it over and under. Bloody C curve, stretching it out, and then I'm coming in and I'm doing my extension as far back as I can. So that's like um, a very beginner, that's a very beginner version of the knee stretch, but that stretch is still feels really good. So you can do it even after you can do the knee stretch. Now I'm going to show you the knee stretch though. So for the knee stretch, I'm on my platform on my knees. And you're going to go ahead and find your Pilates C curve. And it's an exaggerated curve. And you're going to sit back on your, what Marjolaine says, your haunches. So you're sitting back. 
over your heels basically with your C curved, curved over. Uh, sometimes she talks about a beach ball with, like with stomach massage that you're curved over this beach ball. Well, my stomach is my beach ball, but pretend like you're curved over a beach ball even for this and you're gonna push out with your knees and do this stretch. So here I am curved, pushing out with my knees, but I'm keeping the curve and as I come in, it's really stretching my back. We do 10, I do 10 of these. Two. Three. Curving it in. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. I'm keeping that curve the entire time. And ten. And when it comes in, it's really curving me in. Okay, so the second part of the knee stretch is mimicking. That was the cat normal stretch. Is gonna be making the cow. And so I'm gonna get try to get a little bit of an extension and a curve in my back here. I also have my head looking up and forward. It looks like this. I'm pushing back on my knees. One, two, three, four, five. I only do as much curve as is comfortable here. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's my third type of exercise that I do for my back. It's the knee stretch series. There's other variations of that that you can do that you can look up on your DVD that came with your machine or that you can um, look up on the staminaproducts.com live stream <laughs> workout videos and you will see plenty of knee stretch exercises. But those are the two that really just my back feels curved and stretched, it feels flexible. Not necessarily considered a back stretch, but it really does stretch your back, is the stomach massage. And you'll learn in Arab Pilates, a lot of things work almost every muscle of your body. So you can really double dip on a lot of these exercises. For stomach massage, before I was able to get my feet up on the toe bar, I started down here on the platform. And that's a, definitely an option. If I'm starting on the platform, I need to push away a little first. So I have room to get my toes up here. And for the stomach massage, I have to sit at the edge of my platform as close to the edge as I can. So then I have to push away to get my toes up on the platform. And so this is what it would look like. Um, this is the part where Marjolin tells you to curve over your beach ball, a pretend beach ball. If you have a real beach ball like me, curve over your real beach ball. And my head is down. I'm holding the end of the platform like this. My toes again are on the platform for a modification and I scoot back. And every time I scoot in, because of my, because I'm at the edge of the platform, my pelvis slightly tilts in and stretches and strengthens my back in this exercise. So here's one, two, I'm curved over the whole time, three, I'm curved, stretching in, four, five. I'm going to show you how it looks when it's up on the toe bar. So I still scoot back a little to start. I'm at the edge of my platform. Come in, curved over my beach ball. Six, seven, eight. Every time I curve in, my, my pelvis tilts just a little, giving it a stretch. Nine, ten. So I push out again. I uncurve my spine and put my hands behind me and kind of lift my chest. Now, my, toe, my heels are still together, my toes apart for the stomach massage exercise, and my rear is still towards the end of my platform, so I'm still gonna have a slight pelvic tilt when I come in. So it looks like this. One, two, three, four, slight tilt, five, really warming up my back, six, seven, eight, nine, definitely fill this in your abs, 10. Okay, so that's stomach massage, my number four exercise series that I do for my back. Now we come to mermaid. Mermaid's really important because it's stretching the sides of your waist, which again, stretches the sides of your back and keeps your back flexible. Before I was able to do the full mermaid, I could sit here facing my toe bar 
and kind of lean my elbow on my leg and stretch over like this. And obviously hold it as long as you need, but that is a modification for mermaid. And, but another modification for mermaid that's probably a little better if you can try it, is you're sitting on the side. Now even if I was on the floor, on my aeroplanes on the floor, I just let my feet kind of drag across the floor while I do this. But this is what a modification of mermaid can look like. I put my hand in the middle of the toe bar, I lift up my arm straight, and I'm gonna push away with this hand while I lean over. Oh, and I can already feel it super tight. That's really already stretching my back so much. And then I'm gonna come up, I take this arm straight up, and I lean back the other way, and I use my um, shoulder pads to help me get a good grip and a good stretch. Now for mer mermaid, it's always do free per side. So that was the two, those were the two modifications, but I'm gonna do two of the full mermaid now. And the full mermaid, your back leg goes parallel to the shoulder pads, and your front leg comes up, kind of like you're sitting Indian style, and kind of touches your knee here. And so here's the full mermaid, and I'm gonna do two of these. Arm up and over. Come up, my next arm's up, and I use the shoulder pads to help me really lean over. Hold it as long as you need. Like I said, I'm really tight on my sides. You guys will be surprised how much this is stretching you out. And because we're pushing away, we are doing an active stretch, we're strengthening while we stretch. And it's really important to do both sides on the mermaid, even though you are leaning to both sides, it's a different feeling from when you're pushing away and leaning over to when you're just leaning over to the other side. So make sure you do both sides on the mermaid. I usually do three on each side. And modification is my legs are just straight in front of me or down my stand, push away and lean over. Hold, hold, hold. Arm up, lean over and hold onto my shoulder pad. Whew, that feels good. And now I'm gonna do the full mermaid where I'm gonna put my back leg up against the shoulder pads, my front leg forward. And I'm going to go side, up, arm up, and over, holding on to my shoulder pads if I really need that extra stretch. One more push away, lean, up, arm up, and over. I hang out as long as I need to. That side stretching is amazing. It feels amazing. You will love how it feels. The next thing that we're gonna do to stretch and strengthen our back is the elephant. For the elephant, even when I was beginning, I stood up on the platform. So if there is a balance issue, uh, I would have skipped this. But I have to tell you that my mom, who is 68 and has some balance concerns, is still able to do this. So. Maybe have somebody around if you want to try it to support you and see if you can get up here and I will show you the modifications that I began with that maybe you want to try and then I'll show you the full blown elephant. So you stand with your feet hip width apart and if you're taller you're probably going to put your feet against the shoulders which is what Marjolaine Brookman does on the demonstrations but since I'm shorter I just you just have to make sure your feet are under your hips when your head is pushed back, in when your arms are pushed back, and your head is in, in between your arms. So this is the position, my, my feet are under my hips. And I'm gonna leave my head down for this whole entire series. So I'm gonna push through my heels and push back. So if you're doing a modification at this point, you're still pushing through your hands, your head is still down, and all you're gonna do is bend your knees, and straighten them. You can bend as far as you can. You can do mini bends. You're really going to feel a stretch up through, all the way up through your back, but through your um, hamstrings, through your glutes, and up through your back. So I used to do five to ten of these. Um, my husband, because he can't straighten his legs, he did the full elephant with his knees slightly bent. And this is what it looked like. You push through with your heels. 
So one, pushing back, comes in, knees bent, and I really tried to tell him to lift up his tailbone to the sky. Still with his knees bent because he couldn't straighten up. Two, tailbone to the sky. Three, tailbone to the sky. Four, really lift it up. Now I do straight leg elephant and this is what it looks like. Five or six, seven, really focusing on lifting my tailbone up. Feels like you're kind of sticking out your tush. Eight, nine, and ten. The benefit of elephant is that it's stretching out your hamstrings, stretching out your glutes, and it stretches out your lower back while you're pushing back and strengthening those muscles as well. It's a great workout. So the next stretch that I want to do is called the four stretch. I'm gonna get back on my back. So for this stretch, um, I wasn't always able to do it. So I, I would just have to skip this entirely. But for this stretch, I stretch, stretch out my legs and I take my foot, flex it, and lean it across my knee. And then I start to come in. I think this is called like a four stretch or tree, I don't know. So I come in as far as I can. And I'm actually really tight right now. And it really work, it really is stretching the side of my tush, but it's also going into my back. So I come in. If I'm in a flexible, if I'm on a flexible day, and I'll just hold this. If I have a flexible day, I will get up on my tippy toes on the toe bar and really push this knee into the ankle while this foot is flexed, and I will slowly push this knee with light pressure away from my hip. And that is really going to get into my lower back. It's stretching everything here though, not just my lower back, but it's really opening and stretching my lower back. We don't realize sometimes how much our, our hamstrings and our glutes pull on our lower back and make us uncomfortable. Okay, so I hold it as long as I need, then I push back out, flex the next foot, put it on top of my knee, do it again. If I want a little more, I get up on my tippy toes and hold it and then slightly and slowly push my knee down and hold it. And that is super tight. It's really stretching all up in here and all up into my back. So I'm gonna hold that for a little bit. Okay, I'm ready for running. So for running, I straighten my legs. The idea is that one of my heels is gonna go down under the bar and this, the other knee is going to bend, and then I'm going to switch. The other heel is going to go down into the bar, and the knee is going to bend. And I go, heel down, knee up, one. Other heel down, knee up, two, three, four. Switching heels, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. My toes are on the bar, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 14, 15, 16. 17, the further you bend your knee, the further down you go, 18, 19, and 20. And you're supposed to feel as if somebody's grabbing your heel and pulling it under, and it really does kind of feel like that. You can get it to feel like that. Okay, my favorite stretch, but this can be painful, so I save it for the end, is where I lay my knees to the side and look away. And again, your back needs to be warmed up for this. So I do not do this until my back is completely warmed up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let my legs fall to the side and I kind of get on the side of my feet and then I turn my head the other way and I'm going to hold this for like eight seconds. I do three to five of these each side depending on what I need that day and so I think I'm going to do three today but that feels really good. It is really stretching in here and it's actually stretching all the way up into here but this is but behind my hip is where I have my pain sometimes. So this really helps keep that maintained. And then I come up one leg at a time so I don't hurt my back. And then I'm going to lean them to the other side, head away. Come up one at a time, lean to the other side, head away. This is two. One at a time. And you can linger on the side that needs it a little longer. Or you can try to make them even. Leg up one at a time. This is the last one. Then I do three. And this is already just really feeling stretched out. It's great. 
And last one. Oh, that feels. <laughs> oh, I definitely need this stretch. All right, stretch up. So I love to end everything with Eve's lunge, but right before Eve's lunge, I just do a little bit of an extension, hip extension. For the hip extension, I'm gonna start with my knee at the edge of the platform, and I have my other leg next to my toe bar. So it's gonna look like this. My knee is at the edge of the platform, my leg, other leg's right here, and I'm gonna scoot back. And I just do this to really warm up my hip. I do five of these. Three. Four, five. And that really just gets to warm, warmed up. And now I'm gonna put my foot all the way back to the shoulder pad, and I'm gonna get my really, and I still have my other leg up here by the toe bar, and I'm really gonna stretch back. One, this is the Eve's lunge. Two, three, four, and five. Now that feels amazing because these hip muscles get really tight and short from sitting all day and it can throw off your posture, which can hurt your back. And that's why we do these exercises. I start with my, edge of, my leg at the knee at the edge of the platform and do those five hip extensions. And they're pretty small just to get this hip warmed up. Two, three, hold on to your toe bar to help you push away. Four, and five. Now I'm going to put my toe all the way back to the shoulder pad. Keep my other foot here by the toe bar and go back. One. Now two. I can always go back all the way. Three. Four. Five. Whew, that feels amazing. So those were... 10 types of exercises that I like to do for my back to warm it up and stretch it. This whole um, process takes about 15 minutes. So sometimes if I have less time, I will choose which ones I want to do the, the most. But I always start with my warm up footwork to really get it warmed up. And I do not do the side knee thing unless my back has had enough warm up. So I don't always do that one because I don't have a warm up, warm enough back. And if you do it on a cold back, Oh, here. You don't pull back and you have like a problem with your back, you're going to feel that it's uncomfortable. So my problem is my left hip that goes up into my lower back on my left side. And if I do that leaning knee thing without a warm back, it's pretty uncomfortable for me. Um, maybe if your back is completely healthy, it wouldn't be a problem and you can just keep your back, back healthy that way. But I make sure I do many of the other workout or many of the other exercises before I even attempt that one. Um, even when I attempt it, it, I feel it strongly in that um, lower back. So it feels good if my back's warmed up enough. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know this is a little different from what I do, but I really do want to start showing you guys things that you can do with your machine. You don't always have to like pop in the DVD, although I think the DVDs are amazing and I love to use them. They're really my favorite way to work out, but sometimes when I only have a few minutes, um, I have the wall chart up before, you can definitely use that or something like this where you just get a few back exercises in your mind and you have 10 minutes and you can just warm up and stretch out your back. So thank you for watching today. Let me know if you have any questions or comments and leave them below. And I will see you next time on Everything Aero Pilates. Thanks guys, bye.